Today, we've got a tutorial today, and it's been such a long time since I've done my first tutorial. Links in the description of the NUC uh, and the CASA uh, build and tutorial, how to put it together. That was quite a few years ago, but the link will be in the description. Check that out. But this is going to be about the Gigabyte Bricks S, and we're going to be putting it with the OCZ solid state hard drive like a budget one and we're putting using kicks of 16 gig of uh, 1600 megahertz and basically we're going to do about seven to eight different videos we're going to bench test it, we're going to game on it, we're going to do video editing we're going to check for photo rendering, photoshop, all kinds of stuff we're going to test everything out on what's the difference between having such a up to date 6th generation computer compared to uh, pre-built one or a custom built one that's a lot bigger than what this is. Stick around because we're going to get right into this right now. We're going to be doing an unboxing of the Gigabyte Bricks S. This is the newest generation, sixth generation processor in there, which will be the Skylake. Runs on DDR3, you can go up to 1600 megahertz, no problem. But we're going to do a quick unboxing right now, and then we're going to get straight into the tutorial. But first off, you get this as a bare bones pack. This is an ultra compact PC kit. Including in the kit, it's a Gigabyte motherboard, Intel CPU on board, wireless module, Visa mount, or Visa bracket, power adapter. What's new? needed is a 2.5 inch hard drive so it could be a solid state hard drive no matter what size it is as long as it's got enough to put windows and your data and storage and stuff into it um, you're going to need so dim so it's low voltage memory which we got this for 55 pound from overclockers overclockers are well a shout out to overclockers for sending out the harry bows as well they are proper always getting my stuff out there when i need it but this is a 1600 mega hit the uh, megahertz kit um, 1600 megahertz 1600 megahertz it runs at but it's 16 gigabyte kit that's what I meant to say and then obviously you'll need a screwdriver or screwdriver kit probably just a Phillips and a flathead um, not that big really but you just need it to open up the actual case so you can put everything into it so I love the little packing. This is a GB BS i5 H6200. So this is a Core i5, um, and it runs at 19 volts. So it's a very low voltage uh, computer. But let's take it apart. I just love the packaging that Gigabyte have gone to. Really nice packaging right here. So let's get rid of that plastic. Then we slide, is this a sliding one? No, 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 it's not even a sliding one. Well, you're going to see this before I do, so I hope this is all in focus. Oh. Is that all? Ha, <laughs> really joking. God, this is, it's not a computer, jeez. Right, so the packaging is like superb on there. Right, why would you add a CD in here? USB, USB please, USB. So you get a Briggs Ultra manual or how to take it apart and put it together. Very small. Uh, bag of screws, I'm guessing this for the solid state hard drive and or a 2.5 um, inch hard drive which is a mechanical hard drive so it can run at 54 rpm or 7900 rpm speed rotations per minute that is we've got a visa bracket right here that goes in the back of um, a monitor and the, this is so you can hide your computer so you can't see it if you want it just to look like the monitor is built all into one and this is such great packaging here what else we've got in there can't get it out can't get it out Right, there we go. Are we going to get this out? Right, so this is a box. Right, okay, this is great. Because a long time ago, when I wanted stuff uh, like a power brick with nuts, you had to pay for it. You get a power brick with it, so that's good to know. You get... Okay, you get a lead. You get two leads, so I don't know what country that one is. But um, I've got a lead for my country right there as well, so it gives you two leads for it. And more screws. So I'm guessing this is probably for the visa mount, but I don't know until we'll have a look. So there's nothing else in the box at all. That is it, I think. 
So this is really well packaged, you never have to worry about it coming along. But, oh, let's get this back in the box and then we're going to get rid of this and we'll show you the computer. God, the packaging is nice. And it's got like a little magnet uh, lid there, so when you need to send it back. Right, now the best bit, having a look and see what we've got here. This is so light, it's ridiculous. And it's even got padding on the top there, so it doesn't scratch. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is one small, small computer. Obviously it's not as small as uh, the Raspberry Pi, but this is a small, small computer. And it's rocking two USB 3 on the back, so for up to five gigabits per second data transfer. We've got a mini display port, we've got a HDMI um, display port, and this goes up to the full resolution of 4K. We've got a Kesnet unlock on the back. We've got heat distribution air vents at the back. We've got a port for the AC adapter. We've got a gigabit infinite LAN port. We've got a power on button on the top. And we've got two extra USB 3s at the front. We've got a microphone jack, we've got a headphone jack on the front. Really good quality it looks like. And it got a little Intel Core sticker on the front, which is quite a nice little touch. We've got some more air vents on the side there, on the left and right. And this is so... Well, when I started out, when I first had a computer like this, um, it was mainly heat throttling that slowed uh, the computer down. But it looks like they've uh, invented it a little bit more better. There's a bit of heat distribution at the bottom there. Obviously, your model number and everything like that. And it says this way up, and this is where I'm going to actually take the screws out. It's got rubber feet as well, so it doesn't scratch the surface, which is good. Uh, the feels like aluminium, but it's not. It's plastic, and it's got a Gigabyte logo on there. And it doesn't feel like it's going to easily get destroyed, and it's so small. It's so, so small. Alright, so now first thing we're going to do, we're going to take the bottom bit of the Gigabyte's bricks, so we can get into to install the solid state hard drive that we've got here and we're going to be putting in the memory in there as well very easy process this has got six gigabit sata connector inside so you can get nice fast speeds um i still don't know why they've added a cd in there i'm guessing there's some special information on that cd so uh Maybe it'll be good to have a CD drive and actually plug it in, an external one, obviously. It wouldn't just include one for no reason. Well, hopefully not anyway. So I'm just taking off the bottom. The nice little rubber feet there. Right, so there you go. There's a the heavenly glory inside there. So your 2.5 or mechanical 2.5 inch drive goes in here. No problem. Looks well shielded and stuff. Um, right, so DDR3 memory goes in here. This is where your solid state connects to with that um, SATA connector. And this is plugged in into here and it looks very nicely cabled. This is like a tiny like little build. It's, it makes me laugh, it really does. It's got a little watch battery here and then it's plugged into here so you can remember all the bar settings and stuff. It's got all the little chips on there. Um, and it's like you got little miniature USB connectors, that's what it reminds me of. And putting your little fan headers on there, but it's not. Um, so you've got a wireless card here, this is an Intel chip. This is um, obviously to get your Wi-Fi and everything like that. And your MV, M, uh, NVE um, uh, SATA card would go here, and you just screw it down. So it'll go right over the top of the Wi-Fi card and it wouldn't make a difference, it'll be quite fine. But this is how simple this is. So I'll take this off. Because this is just to hold down in trans transportation. And move it to that side here. A solid state hard drive. And this will slide in here. Like so. And I've got to find out where the screws are. Hang on one sec. Right, so what I would do is take this plate off first. Silly me. So I'll take the plate off first so I can get the solid state drive in there. So if you're shipping it, it's not going to fall about. Just slide it in here. 
and these are what these screws are for so I'm using the OCZ here just a value um, budget solid state drive but it's much faster than a mechanical drive of any 2.5 inch but a good thing about it is that solid state it's no mechanical moving parts inside of it and it's current up to date and this is a 480 gig version so imagine having 480 gig of literally 530 to 550 megabytes per second transfer reads and writes on there it's pretty cool but you can go with something like 30 gig if you really wanted to cost you hardly anything because obviously the gigabyte bricks would actually cost the most um, but you can have up to 16 gig DDR3 and then you can go for a drive that you can go with well I don't think you can go with a new Samsung drive which is I think three and a half terabytes because it's slightly thicker than what this is but maybe you could go for a thicker drive in there um, but we went with this one as it's nice and nice budget one and it's got the speeds and everything I've just noticed that you've got some uh, cooling here as well cooling pads so gigabytes gigabyte thought about that as well so you can connect the SATA connector to the actual drive itself like this and it's just slotted in it's like a ribbon over the top to keep it nice and sturdy so I'm gonna leave it on the side like that then we're gonna get the memory out which is the Kingston memory and you can go with using one of these just 4 gig uh, 8 gig and 16 gig and I'll tell you what I've gone with 16 gig because I'm gonna bench it and see how far I can well what I can gain out of doing all of this you know without it just dying on me with loads of heat so this has got low latency this uh, this card is 1.3.5 volts and it's just a Kingston 60 gig slot so 8 gigs each and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the bottom one in first and it goes in at an angle like that and all you have to do is press and then click it down and it's in as simple as that just make sure it's nice and tightly in and that one's in as well and that's it that is basically the Gigabytes Briggs, that's the computer already done there enough. Now, I've got a Wi-Fi card in there, I don't really know how far it goes yet, but I'm going to tell you in a sec when I find out, because I didn't even know it had a Wi-Fi card, because it's got a Gigabit LAN port as well, so it's pretty crazy all the stuff it's got. So now, I'm going to screw this back on to the plate at the top. I like how they've done this, this keeps all the temperature away, so I could add in another two screws if I wanted to, so I'll have four, it's quite fiddly these screws, and I'll screw this back on now, get on there, da, 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 da. I'm going to even try and use Premiere Pro and After Effects, not too many effects or anything like that, just something like an intro or something. I'm gonna try and create it on this little computer. I wanna see how powerful it really is and how far we can push it. If we can make computers so powerful, like a full tower computer into such a small build like this, you can hide anywhere, it'd be awesome. You can take this as a, a video vlogger and take it with you and uh, see uh, what we can do. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on. It has to go back one way the screws only fit one way so i put the four screws back on and then just screw them back in on the feet simple as that oh gosh sorry mm -hmm. so we're also going to test for heat as well how much heat this little baby's going to be pushing because we don't want it to get too hot but Intel CPUs are pretty good and do handle heat throttling pretty well, especially in this new generation of stuff. You know what? I think this pad they brought was for me to put on here so it didn't scratch the actual surface of the computer, but it's all done now. That's how simple that computer is to build. 
So all I need to do is connect this power brick and the actual cable that came with it and it plugs into the back here and you can plug in the USB so your keyboard, mouse you can, if you've got a LAN port you can just put it in there mini display port if you've got that normally normal people put it in the HDMI port Kez it and lock because it's so small someone could steal it and you've got two USBs left over now I can't see a USB 2 anywhere so hopefully this is backwards compatible as well but we're going to test it all out and then we're going to find out well, I hope you enjoyed part one part two is coming and obviously there's more parts to this as well because I'm going to check heat throttling on this computer check out video editing photography and photo rendering and gaming and anything I can do with this Core i5 Gigabyte Briggs S Thanks for watching, don't forget to share this video and throw it up a like if you like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.